point of view, you and four of your friends are walking down the dark corridors of a Space Hulk. All of a sudden, you hear clanking noises coming around the corner, and you prepare your weapons, expecting some Gretchen's and Orcs ready for some mischief. But, unfortunately, what you have in front of you is this. Alarm. Welcome back to Rust the Watch, my name is Miguel, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to paint your Space Crusade Chaos Dreadnought with the classic colors of the 90s. So buckle up brush liquors, because it's going to be a wild ride. When it comes to painting things like this, I always look for sources of inspiration from the pages of White Dwarf, books and the game itself back from the era. I'm trying to be faithful to the paint jobs that they did back in the 90s, and in this case I have three main sources of inspiration. The first one will be Space Marine, where we can find these Chaos Dreadnoughts as well, even smaller. However, I didn't find any miniatures painted in official colors, so I couldn't use those. And if you know where to find those, please share the link below because I'm quite curious and I would like to know more about that. The second source of inspiration that I looked into was inside the game itself. And those are the gaming cards that the game included. You can see there the Dreadnought painted in green and white colors, but doesn't look that great to me. And the third source of inspiration is on the box itself. But not only that, we can find better pictures online from White Dwarf and the Heavy Metal pages where they showcase these miniatures. I have left a link below if you want to download this and you have it in front of you when you're painting the miniatures yourself. Speaking of inspiration, there has not been any other dreadnoughts like this one in Warhammer 40k. Space Marine, Epic 40k aside, not before in Road Trader, nor afterwards in Warhammer 40k 2nd edition and subsequent edition. All the dreadnoughts look more or less like this. So where did they get the source of inspiration for this design? I wonder. You have 20 seconds to bite my shiny metal ass. Yeah, Games Workshop with C's and C's letters left and right doing that? I don't think so. But you guys are getting paint. Anyways, let's get to the paint job. The first paint I used was Thalassar Blue from Contrast. The idea is to paint both the cap rays on the top of the dreadnought and the legs. And this color is perfect for this because it allows us to further darken it later. Do not forget the weapons, the rocket launcher, the plasma gun, and the assault cannon all have blue parts as well, and you need to paint those with Talasa Blue. Just a second of your time, if you haven't done it yet, consider subscribing to the channel, leave a like below, and also remember that there is super thanks if you really really enjoy the content and you want to help me out to buy more stuff to paint and to keep filming these things. With Iron Breaker or any kind of color similar to it, a mid-tone silver, we are going to paint the rims and the underside of the Dreadnought. Notice that you also have to paint several pieces of the weaponry in the Dreadnought and that has to be done with a metallic color. Now with pure white, we are going to paint the flaming motifs the Dreadnought has. For this, I have a very clever trick that I hope you can copy and it's painting a small dot and from there we're gonna paint those lines in the shape of flames. Notice how I do it right here. One dot and then I start painting. This helps me more or less focus on the correct distance for painting the flames and it's a very simple trick that anybody can emulate. Notice how I also paint the areas that I have stained with the previous coat of Talaset Blue. Now we're gonna paint yellow, and for this I'm using Sealot Yellow for the simple reason that it reactivates and I'm gonna use that later on to help me on my paint job. For the golden metallic areas, I also use this color on top of silver. So to sum it up, all metals that are going to be gold and the areas that are gonna be either orange or red. Also great thanks to my channel members over here, thank you very much for putting up with me and for being faithful members of Rush to Wash. Let's get back to it. There are many ways to skin a dreadnought, and if you do not have this particular paint, any yellow paint will work just fine. As long as it's a bright brand color and not too dark, you can paint all these parts with any yellow at your disposal. Next is Griff Charger Grey. With this we're gonna start darkening the blue areas very carefully. Notice that the back of the cap rays, I still leave it with Talasa Blue, but I'm further darkening from here towards the flames. A 
Another speed paint, Hylor Blue, is the one that I'm going to use to now further give some contrast to the blue paint. The idea is that with Grief Charger Grey, we are losing a little bit of vibrancy and I want the blue to really pop. So Hylor Blue is going to help me. Also, I'm taking into account that it's going to reactivate later and it's going to help me with getting highlights. Basilic Cannon Grey is my choice here to darken the metals and further darken the areas of the blue that are closer to the flames. The metals underneath and on the sides of the dreadnought also get a little bit of this dark color. And the idea is that I want to make the metallic parts darken and kind of grimy. Next one, another speed paint, Fire Giant Orange. I'm painting now the feet and the base of the flames, leaving the top of those in pure yellow. Okay, next now is Blood Red from Speed Paints. I'm darkening the base of the Dreadnought and the flames, in this case the feet, the face, but leaving the contour near the eyes with pure orange, and then the other details that we have in the weapons. It's time to use to our advantage the dreaded reactivation issue that we have with speed paints. As I said, it's not a bug, it's a feature. I'm painting the tips of the flames with this pure white paint, activating the paint beneath and getting smooth transitions by doing that. I'm also going to do a lot of panel highlights with this. If this is something that makes you very nervous, well, you can always skip this step but the volume is going to be greatly improved and because the paint is going to mix with the undertone made with the speed paints you will see this is going to be much more subtle than pure white This is a detail that I personally love from the original paint job and is the starry feel that you have on the cap race, which is just painting small dots on it. For the plasma gun, I'm adding very liquid paint in the crevices and carefully highlighting all over the place. And then I repeat the process in all the other weapons as well. For instance, in the rocket launcher, it includes the magazine, the small rockets, and all the parts of the weapon as well. Old Faithful Agrax Earthshade is used to darken all the metallic areas of the miniature, both gold and silver colors. After that paint dries, I highlight once again with Iron Breaker, making sure that I just do the edges and the areas that I want to pop a little bit more from the very dark metallic color that we achieve now. We're going to repeat the process with a gold color for those golden areas. As you can see here, I'm using Vallejo Gold. I've lost some vibrancy due to the highlights with white, so I'm glazing now with Cassandra Yellow to get back some of the contrast lost. Those of you paying attention and with keen eyes probably have seen that the base has been already started to be painted. I'm using my usual method for the rust, which is just using three different colors, a reddish brown, a purple and an orange, and then 
a little bit of highlights with a dry brush and a metallic paint. After that, I paint some areas with pure white and wash them with the choice of colors that I have in mind. In this case, I'm using just a dark green. I paint the bullet cases with a little bit of dark yellow. And then I just apply some extra agrax shade on the bullet holes and a little bit of athermatic blue on some of these that I want to look like small light bulbs on the floor. And now let's get some pictures to see this behemoth in its natural environment, the corridors of the Space Hulk. Watch this video next, and remember guys, my name is Miguel, this is Rush the Watch, and I'll catch you in the next one. Un beso, adios.